hope you're all having a fantastic day. I'm out here in the shop today. It's early morning, getting ready to start my week. And I have to basically prep my gear, my EDC, maybe stuff that should have been done this weekend, but we're going to do it this morning. I have about a year and a half on this handcrafted belt right now. I just want to give it a quick refinish. Our EDC blade choice for today is extremely dull. It's a Benchmade Osborne. The green standoffs, it's a 940. We'll have a look at that, and we're going to whetstone sharpen that in a few minutes. And you guys might have noticed, I have a hole in a pair of somewhat new pants of mine. I don't want to throw them out just yet, so I'm going to throw a few lock stitches in that and have them back on the road. Now many of you watching this will know that yesterday's video, my last video, included repairing the pants and restoring that belt, getting back to tip top shape. So today's video, we're gonna jump right in to that bench made knife sharpening. I hope you enjoy it. So we are starting, you can see the polish in the edge there. So the face of the bevel is still polished, of course, unless it gets really scratched up, you're cutting shingles. It'll stay like that. I'm not sure if you can see all the light we're reflecting there. Very dull, beat up edge. I've used this thing for opening paint cans and as a screwdriver and, and uh, stripping wires. And it's just taken a lot of abuse over the last couple weeks dirty there now. First thing we'll do is get it cleaned up. I don't want any gunk getting on my nice stones. Then we'll get to sharpening. My current favorite starter the Shapton Kuramaku Blue Black 340 grit stone. This is a ceramic stone. Beautiful starting stone. You can see we have our knife all cleaned up. Just give it a little spritz with some brake cleaner, a little wipe down with a shop towel. Now to start sharpening, again, I'll remind you, a good skill every person should have. So we'll lay our knife on the stone. We're going to tip it up, so I'm not trying to find the bevel just yet when I lay it here. We're going to tip it up until our shadow disappears under our edge. Now the Osborne, the 940 here, actually has a fairly steep angle. So it requires, you know, uh, uh, quite a bit of angle, more than some of the other knives, and I've kept that there because it is a very tough angle, and it's sort of my heavy, uh, heavy use knife. So once you find that angle, the trick is to hold it. Now you don't have to get into making that upward sweep on every pass. This knife has a long straight edge, and then a sweep. So if you want to just save some of the the difficulty for a little bit. Take the easy way out, just stay on that straight edge. Work that knife until you're doing some, some real work there. You actually start forming an edge. We're going to take a look after every few passes and see what we're doing. Are we contacting the right part? You can make the adjustments then. If you're leaning up too much, if you're not contacting the entirety of that little bevel, or if you're leaning back and you're not sharpening right up to the edge, make those adjustments. I don't need to check as often now. I've been sharpening a long time. So I kind of have a good feel of what I'm doing there. I don't need to check quite as often, but still, it's a good idea to keep checking your work. Now this is S30V steel, so a nice tough steel. It does take a really good edge. I've had really good experience with S30V, but it is going to be a little slower cutting than some of your softer steels. Which is in some ways a little more forgiving because your mistakes aren't going to be as bad. 
and you go off a little bit on a single pass, you drop or increase your angle on a given pass, you're not going to totally reprofile your bevel that quick because it's slow abrading. That one pass didn't have a whole lot of effect. So we're, we've formed pretty good apex on our flat. Now you have to hold that angle for the sweep, which is not too bad. I like to have my finger here right up on the tip to help with applying pressure. If you're only holding back here, for one, you're putting pressure on the pivot, sideways pressure, which is not really needed. Not usually a big deal, especially with a robust knife like this, but when you're dealing with a knife that's delicate, say like uh, Spyderco Endura, where you have a long, thin blade, kind of a, not a real robust or tough pivot point in here, if you're sharpening it on that tip, putting the pressure back here, putting a lot of sideways pressure on that pivot. These knives, knives, as you can imagine, weren't designed to have a lot of sideways pressure. That's not generally how you use a knife, so having your finger out on the tip helps you put the pressure right where you want it. And I find it also helps me feel as I'm getting down close to my stone. It helps me with tip contact there. Now I'll just keep switching back and forth. I keep getting questions as of late. I'm not sure who's spreading the misinformation out there. But I keep getting questions as of late on my use of back and forth strokes. A lot of people seem to be saying lately that you either have to do only cutting strokes or only strapping passes. Which is just ridiculous. If you found your angle on the stone, keep that angle keep the knife moving. You guys know that I usually finish up with just cutting strokes, but for the bulk of the work, do both. Speeds up your work, doesn't cause any harm. Use both. A Nanawa 600 grit Nagura, or dressing stone as they call it. You can get these stones on paulsfinest.com by the way. That's where these came from. And these dressing stones are great if you don't have one. Great addition to your sharpening kit. Look at that. Nice fresh surface. Lots of fresh cutting particle. Now we're going with the Shapton 1000. The 1000 glass stone. Which, if you've been watching this channel for a while, you'll know I really, really love. Fresh, clean stone to start. Now we're working. Now that we've removed all our dents and rolls and chips, we're working to remove the scratches made by that blue-black stone. So, same angles, same pattern. New set of scratches. Done on the 1000, this is the Glassstone 4000 now, we'll give it a quick work, clean it up first once again. Exact same step, remove scratches from the 1000.
Now at this point we're honing, we're not sharpening. Our edge has been established. We are trying to refine that edge, polish that edge, or whatever finish you want to end up with. Today, since we started with such a nice beautiful polish on there, I think we'll put that back on. Notice as I'm finishing up with my last few passes on the stone, I lighten up pressure and then I use only cutting strokes. Now this will be my last stone, which is a Nanawa Professional 5000. You can hear how smooth and slick this stone is here. I'm not going to work it too hard. We've done the bulk of our work. Nice light passes, not a whole lot of pressure here now. What a beautiful feeling stone. Now a couple passes on the strap, we'll be ready to start our day. This will just help us refine that edge, give us a little extra polish for aesthetics. Help clean any grit off of there. And back to a polish, not the gleaming polish that we started with. So as you can see, nice polish. I didn't spend the extra time. This is a work day. I just want to get this done, get it nice and sharp, and get to work. It's a quick edge test. And it's shaving sharp. So that's it for this little video, guys, and this two part mini series of preparing for our work day, of covering some new skills, and preparing our EDC. Do you carry an everyday carry system? If so, let me know down in the comments below. Maybe it's just a pocket knife. Maybe you have a whole bunch of stuff. First aid, multi-tools, knives, lighters. I'd love to hear. It's always fun seeing other people's kit. Also, let me know if you'd like me to continue some of this EDC type content. Thanks for watching. Make sure you hit that like button before you leave. Subscribe if it's your first time here. And I hope to see you in the next video of mine.